Okay, so uh, in this last video, we're going to start working on the, the tail, the feet, and eventually the wings. Um, so I've just created a a poly pipe. Um, just positioning it and moving it around. Um, it's just an extension of the skeleton that was that was internal to to the bird. I've just created a cube, scale it lengthways. I'm going to add a couple of edge loops, move them up. I'm going to add an edge loop just along the middle and delete the middle face and then we're just going to use the appenter poly tool just to add a nice little indentation in there and then add some edge loops just to just to harden those edges and I'm just positioning that uh, just along the inside the skeleton and we're going to make a, a duplicate I'm just looking at how these two are going to fit together and obviously it looks a little bit awkward, it looks a little bit clunky so what I'm going to do is just make them a little bit smaller and then select one of the uh, one of the end edges on each of them and just extrude it out and there we go, so just angled it as well and rotated it so that they meet at a similar a similar kind of angle and then we can just uh, model a small bolt to go through it and it'll look a little little better we're just going to have some edge loops again just to tighten up all those edges again it's not quite looking right so we're going to just tweaking it just moving the points just pulling the points around just to make it look a little bit more deliberate and a little bit nicer okay that's okay um, and then created a quad cylinder there and it hasn't quite worked because we've got reflection turned on and um, so it's moved the outside edges twice obviously because we've got reflection turned on so just turned reflection off and then it's, it's worked fine again I'm just scaling our cylinder extruding the two edges out just to, to act like a bolt and there we go just harden the edges up again and there we are, just scale it up a touch. Lovely. I'm just going to mesh and just combine that, or group that, sorry, and then duplicated it, scaled it minus one and Z, and I'll just move it over to the to the other side. Just made another quad cylinder, and this is just going to be a pipe that links the the engine at the back of the of the bird down to the tail. So I've just extruded the faces, and I'm just extruding them out again. There we go. Just to the center of the, make sure they reach the center of the pipe that we've created. Now I'm just going to duplicate the the engine that we made. Scale it down. Make sure the rotation's right. And I'm just duplicating the uh, joints as well. Because it won't fit, I've just scaled them down so they're all inside the engine, then selected the the outside verts for each of them and uh, scaled those up just to reach. Okay, now we've duplicated the pipe. And uh, just making a core of a core of uh, cylinders uh, joining the two engines together. Just looks a bit more mechanical, a little bit more meaty. Uh, I felt it looked a little bit light. When there was only one so we're just making four or five here now i think it just feels it feels a little bit better feels a little bit more solid okay now this is going to be one of the one of the feathers it's just a, a normal cube just flatten a couple of the verts in extrude one of the faces in and then down again just to get some nice highlights and some nice reflections add some edge loops to tighten it all up 
move it down and I'm just going to create another quad cylinder just to act as the as the join for that I'm just going to move it down scale it and pull the verts out just to join the uh, the feather I'm just making a few of them just rotating them around just seeing where they where they might all go how they might all fit in I didn't want them all there, uh, all flat on one axis, so we've created a bit of depth there as well. And now I'm just going to duplicate the, uh, the feather portion as well. I'm just scaling it up because it felt a little bit small in comparison with the rest of the uh, the rest of the bird. So I've just scaled it up. Again, that's all I'm all I'm checking is when I when I zoom out, it's just checking the uh, checking how it looks as a as a whole, as a, not just as the tail on its own, but as the model as a whole. And just moving those around, just adding a couple more because I didn't quite feel like it was it was wide enough, so just adding two more on the outside edges just to really really push the width a little bit okay there we go and again I'm just going to join the, uh, the second pipe that we made to the first one it's exactly the same as we did in the first video uh, with the internal skeleton I'm just going to delete the faces combine the two pieces of geometry and then vert snap the vertices over to to where we want them to be, and then merge them all together. Really, really, really quick and easy process. There you go. Select all the all the verts and just merge. I'm just going to add some edge loops in, just to keep all the corners nice and tight. Okay. And we can move on to the onto the feet. I've just created a, another quad cylinder. I'm just maneuvering it up, so it's going to be the the equivalent of the of the hip joint. Just extruding the bottom faces in, and then down. And then we're going to create another one at 90 degrees to the first. I'm just going to rotate it around and then select the two ends and extrude them in. Again, we're just control clicking on the, uh, on the Z axis there. I extrude them in and then scale them in and then back out again just to create a nice kind of button. I'm going to create a, a plank shaped cube. Add a few edge loops in another direction and again just manipulate the edge loops and just move them around just so that we can create some circular shapes in the middle and again I'm just using the control um, and scale handle just to scale the, the verts in only two axes I've selected the edge loop extruded it back and I'm just merging the points just changing the values to make sure they all merge I'm going to go ahead and do it individually and just pressing G just to repeat the repeat the last tool so selecting pairs of verts and just pressing G and there we go and then we can add a few edge loops just to tighten those up again and then we're going to duplicate this piece of geometry And we're going to use another quad cylinder just to act as another bolt between the two, just to hold them in place. Just make sure it's long enough. Insert a couple of edge loops. Select the faces that we create and just extrude them out. Just to create a little lip. And 
and it's exactly the same thing. And the feature of the, the bird's legs is, is obviously the, the top portion goes back and then forwards rather than the other way around. Um, I just felt that that was a little bit small, so I'm just scaling the uh, scaling the geometry up there a little bit. Um, then we're going to use a cube for the feet. And I'm just going to insert some more edge loops. And um, we're just adding a, a little bit of joining geometry, so it's just a cube. Add three edge loops and um, make a little curve at the top. Add a couple more edge loops just to uh, to add a bit of detail and keep the edges nice and tight. So now I'm just moving the camera out just to check the size of the feet against the uh, against the size of the rest of the bird. There we go. It's just a little bit of extra geometry, just to add a nice little bit of detail. Edge loops to harden all the edges. Okay, now I've added three edge loops in. Um, I'm going to add another couple into the into the center, another one into the center, just to move the the center of those feet in widthways, um, because a bird's feet are naturally tapering in the center. Then we've got two claws at the front and, and one at the back. And I'm going to keep all these edges nice and tight, just to make it feel like a big, heavy chunk of metal. And then I'm just going to take the faces that we've created for for the front claw and the back claw by adding all those edge loops, and just to extrude them. Uh, just scale them in, extrude them up, point them back down again, extrude them down, scale them in, extrude them, and scale them again. And I'm just going to add more and more edge loops just to keep all those different sections nice and tight. Just scale the end verts to a point. Add a couple of edge loops. I felt that those toes were a little bit wide and thin, so I changed those in a second as well. I'm just going to do the back. Just extrude that claw. Scale it to a point. Add a couple of edge loops. So here we go, I'm just going to select the verts and just scale them in on the Z just to flatten them out a little bit. And I'm just playing with the scale and just making it, making sure it looks comfortable and looks right. And then when I think it's right, we'll just select the select the group and duplicate it across. So we've got the, the right leg there as well. Um, and for the wings, we're just going to use a quad cylinder again. It goes into that hole that we created before um, as part of the side. Another quad cylinder just outside it. Extrude the top faces in. You know, you, you know this process well by now. And um, we're just making more of a rectangular hole than a, a circular one this time. Okay, add some edge loops to keep the edges nice and tight. Make it a little bit thinner. There we go, and then we're going to use a cube um, as the basis for the frame. And again, it's just going to be a plank shaped cube. I'm just going to manipulate it and move the points around. And um, you can see in the in the front view, I've just gone in, just created a curve, just as a, a kind of guide as to where I where I want the frame to be and the size I want the wing to be. Sometimes it's nice to have uh, just a little bit of guide geometry. Okay, so then when we've we've got this plank, we've just rotated it around just to fit the guide. Then we can select the verts, move them up, duplicate it, and rotate it down. And we'll just move the depth of it as well, so we're just going to move it in in, uh, in both axes, just to make sure that they're not sitting on top of each other, they're just sitting next to each other. And um, then again we can just uh, just duplicate it, and this is going to be a curved central pillar that joins the two together. So I'm just going to add a couple of edge loops in and just curve it around nicely. So we're just going to pull the all three edge loops back and then the center one back a little bit more, and then just tidy up the uh, the joins a touch. See that's just rotated off axis a little bit, so we just sort that out. OK, 
and I'm just going to duplicate them again and this is going to be the far side of the wing now and again I'm just making sure they don't sit on top of each other they're just sitting behind one another okay so I'm just pulling the uh, pulling the verts out on these cubes and just adding a little bit of geometry wherever we need it just to get that nice curve okay and again I'm just going to go in and just clean up the joins where all these sit together because again if this was a real object obviously someone would have made it and everything would be somewhere as with a deliberate choice and deliberate action so you've got to make it look like that when you're making a 3d model as well so we just want to add that extra little bit of precision and just tidy up all of these portions where these cubes meet each other and then we can just duplicate couple across as well just to add a little bit of depth there we go okay so it looks a little bit a little bit tidier a little bit more deliberate and then we can just a little bit of a jigsaw which way you want it to fit then what we can do is once we've tidied all these all these little looks much okay I'm just going to duplicate that one across again and what we can do now is we can just create a, another quad cylinder and I'm just going to rotate it around extrude the front faces out and just use that as a, as a small bolt that would tie all these pieces together so again just uh, add a couple of edge loops where we need it like those move it back and then wherever we have a join between all of these planks we're just adding a little bolt again it's just a nice little touch of detail it'll just like, add some nice highlights some nice reflections um, there we go and just add that two in the far corner as well. Okay, for the second portion of the wing, um, we're just gonna use the same technique that we have before on the side of the bird and for the bits that join the cogs together on the front of the bird. Um, and we're just gonna go into the front view and just create some EP curves and just space them out and uh, you know make it look kind of artistic and nice and it, and then obviously create a plane and extrude the plane along along the curves um, it's a nice way of creating some intricate little detail relatively easily and relatively painlessly um, but again like we did with the body is you know we built the body and then grouped it together and, and rotated it and moved it because obviously it's easier to build along a flat axis and we're doing exactly the same thing with the wing here is we're building the wing vertically and building it on axis and then we'll group it all together and rotate it around um so as you can see i'm just going in just generating ep curve ep curves and just tweaking the control points just to make everything look kind of nice um the only thing to, to bear in mind is these obviously can't float in space um, so they've got to either rest on the wing frames or each other for support so they need to have at least a couple of edges touching something else um, and it really is just a case of creating a really rough curve and then going in and tweaking the points until you're, until you're happy with the shape um, I'm going to finish off the this first kind of third of the wing and then I'll jump to to where I finished the rest of the the rest of the wing. Uh, I just had a little extra little detail, detail in the uh, in this top corner. And the benefit of working obviously in this front view is you can just you can just grab the handles and move them. You don't have to worry about going 
back in the Z or suddenly with things being completely off axis when you when you come back into perspective mode. Um, and we just created a plane, just scaled it down, and just hitting Control D to duplicate. Um, and then with the Move tool selected, hitting C to curve snap, and then middle clicking on the curve, and that's snapping the the duplicate to the curve and just maneuvering it along that curve. And then I'm just going to go in and uh, just adjust the rotations to make sure all the rotations are right for all of these planes. And again, because we're building in one axis, we only have to rotate it in the X. We don't have to worry about getting complex rotations right and really aligning it closely because we know it's we know it's already right. And then it's just a case of uh, selecting the plane, selecting the curve. Changing the divisions. Oh, sorry, hitting extrude, extrude and then changing the divisions. Um, the only thing to be careful of is if you if you're going to smooth all these objects afterwards, you don't want to be adding too many divisions. Um, things are okay, looking a little bit rough as long as you tighten the edges up. If you're going to smooth them later on, and Maya will smooth the curves quite nicely and smooth any any really harsh turns quite nicely for you. Um, and then again, if you've got a, a curve with piece of geometry that splits up into two with multiple curves just add an edge loop if you need to create the same kind of size and then select the face and extrude that along the curve and uh, now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create some feathers down at the bottom so i've just created a, a cube and we're going to work on it exactly the same way as we did the tail feathers i've just scaled in the top drag the bottom vertices down and scaled those in as well just move the pivot points so that it's easier to rotate and then I'm just going to duplicate this all down the wing and um, just adjusting the rotation based on on where it, where it is on the wing there we go and once these are all done then we can just select them all Duplicate them, move them along, and then just scale them down. And then that's automatically our second group of wings. I'm just going to add some edge loops again just to tighten the edges up and make sure they don't turn uh, a little bit too smooth and too soft curves. So I'm just going to add some around those, that center change as well. And then again, just duplicate a bolt along the frame for every one of those wing pieces. I'm just going to change them for the, the main bolts, obviously, during the frame, and then I'm just going to make little thinner ones for the, for the wing pieces. And just making sure, again, that everything touches. There's not massive gaps in between all of the the pieces of geometry and there we go so wing finished we group it together duplicate it scale it minus one in z and then we can rotate it once we've finished building all the uh, all the geometry and there's our model